Hi, I'm Erica from The Pancake Princess, and today we're trying nine different churro recipes. Churros are basically a fried dough rolled in sugar. Today we're trying the Mexican variation, which is more typically rolled in cinnamon sugar, versus the Spanish version, which tends to be eggless and rolled in sugar and served with a thick chocolate dipping sauce. So churros are generally made from some variation on a choux pastry, which is butter, flour, water, and egg. Um, and so there was definitely less variation in the recipes for this bake-off versus some of the previous bake-offs, but still enough variation to keep it interesting. So some churros didn't use eggs, some used eggs, some used a combination of flour, uh, milk and water um, versus just water, some used sugar in the dough, some didn't. So I'm gonna walk you through all nine recipes that we tried and let you know my thoughts on each. This recipe is by All Recipes, and this is one of three recipes that we tried that does not use eggs, so more in the Spanish style of churros. Um, it also stood out because it uses just a little bit of oil in the batter instead of butter, which is more typical for a choux pastry, um, and it uses just a little bit of sugar in the dough. So without egg, which generally acts as a leavener, um, I've seen all of the recipes that don't use egg tend to be a little bit thinner, so All Recipes was a very skinny churro, but you still get a really great crisp on the outside, so very crunchy on the outside, a little bit chewy on the inside. Um, probably could have used a little more cinnamon in the cinnamon sugar coating. Overall, I thought this was a great churro. I just like my churros thicker generally, so I generally preferred the ones with egg. This recipe is by My Latina Table. It's very similar to all recipes, but it uses butter instead of oil. And it was also the only recipe to use a cinnamon stick steeped in the like boiling liquid in the beginning um, to get some of that cinnamon flavor into the dough. I forgot to mention in the beginning that all of these churros are fried dough in cinnamon sugar, so they were all good. There is no bad churro. Um, this one, my only complaint is that I didn't really taste the cinnamon flavor from steeping the cinnamon stick in the water. So if it were me, I don't keep cinnamon sticks on hand, so I'm probably not gonna be making this recipe super often, but it was very similar to all recipes to me. Um, I think I would lean slightly towards all recipes just because the little bit of sugar in the batter made it slightly sweeter, um, but both great recipes. They're all gonna be great. This recipe is by Recipe Tin Eats. So this recipe is somewhat similar to all recipes, a little less vegetable oil and no sugar in the batter. But what's most interesting is the cooking method. So it actually, instead of a typical choux pastry, which is cooked on the stove, you boil the water and the butter together and then you add the flour and kind of cook it. Um, that helps gelatinize the starches in the flour, which helps create the structure so that when the churro hits the oil, it helps kind of create steam and puff up. Um, so this recipe did not call for cooking being cooked on the stove, which all of the other recipes did. So this one, you mix the dry ingredients together, then you add boiling water, and you also add a chemical leavener, so baking powder, and this was the only recipe to use that. So the frying definitely could have varied from batch to batch, but I found that these churros are significantly kind of softer. There's still a nice crunch along the edges, but Whereas all recipes stayed super crispy, this recipe kind of got a little bit soft, which I actually don't mind. I kind of like the chewy texture. I think the flavor is great. So I'm pleasantly surprised by this recipe. It was very easy to make. So if you're kind of shy about like cooking the whole flour on the stove thing, this recipe was super easy to make um, and it tastes great, so. This recipe is by Rick Martinez at Bon Appetit, and this is the start of our recipes that use egg in the recipe. So this is actually very similar proportions 
to the Disney churro recipe, which a lot of you re requested. Um, and the main difference is that this is the only recipe that uses a combination of milk and water as the liquid in the dough. So the milk should add a little more richness. It also uses a vanilla bean in the dough to kind of infuse vanilla flavor into the dough. So this batch has been sitting here for a little bit. When I fried a previous batch, they were super crunchy on the outside with a really custardy interior. These churros still have a very soft interior and I would say the flavor is like the best so far. So love the vanilla that's coming through. They taste very rich, like, I don't know, kind of like a cream puff, which is also made out of a shoe pastry, but like I think best flavor overall. And if you like a really custardy interior, this is probably the churro for you. When I was taking them out of the fryer and eating them like straight after being fried, the inside almost tastes raw, but it definitely sets up after resting for a few minutes. This recipe is by A Cozy Kitchen, and this is the closest to a traditional shoe pastry. So it's about 1.5 cups of flour, one cup of water, one stick of butter, and four eggs. So with four eggs, this was the highest ratio of eggs among any of the recipes, so I was very curious to see how that would affect the recipe. Mm -hmm. So this was by far my favorite churro in terms of the texture. So as you can see, it's quite a thick churro if you compare it to all recipes. For example, it puffs up quite a bit, which I attribute to the eggs serving as a leavener because this has such a high proportion of eggs. Um, I would also say it is a little bit bready and you can kind of taste that it's a little bit eggier than some of the other churros. So taste wise, not sure it's my absolute fave, but um, you just can't get any better than this really thick texture. Like it's just, such a satisfying churro. So this is the highly requested Disney recipe. So I think Disney released this as their official churro recipe a little while ago. It's fairly similar to a cozy kitchen. It just uses slightly less flour and eggs, but full stick of butter. And this is the only recipe to use ground cinnamon in the dough. I can see why this recipe is so popular. This is definitely what I think of when I think of like a traditional churro because I grew up on the churros from Costco. Um, but it's just like a very light golden color. They're some kind of cross between a cozy kitchen and the Bon Appetit recipe to me. So not quite as like rich and custardy as Bon Appetit and not quite as bready and eggy as a cozy kitchen, but some kind of like nice in between where it's like a little bit eggy, a little bit custardy, um, but just like not as much flavor, I would say, as Bon Appetit. So to me, this was a good churro. I would make it again. Um, could I taste the cinnamon in the dough? No, because it's rolled in cinnamon sugar. So, I mean, I don't know if that really makes that big of a difference. This recipe is by Isabel Eats, and it's a similar ratio to the Disney recipe, except that it only uses two eggs um, and uses a much lower proportion of butter, so only three tablespoons versus a full stick. So I was curious to see if that would affect the taste of the churro. So interestingly, I find that Isabel eats, well, it took a long time to brown in the fryer, um, which by the way, the recipes all called for different temperatures, like varying from 320 to 375, but I found in order to get these churros to kind of cook through, I had to cook most of them in between 350 and 375. So this churro browned really quickly in comparison to some of the others like Disney or Mexico in my kitchen. Um, and then it got like this nice crust on the outside with like a really custardy inside. Versus when I look at churros like A Cozy Kitchen or Disney, these took a long time to both brown and cook through. And I think a higher ratio of butter and egg in the recipe is gonna make it a little more soft and poofy. So you get that great poof. Um, but it is gonna be more custardy on the inside versus less egg and butter is gonna make it taste, I mean, they taste about the same, but the texture is gonna be a little more compact, not as like aerated, um, but you'll get probably a nicer crisp on the outside. This recipe is by Mexico in my kitchen. It's a very similar recipe to Isabel Eats in that it has a low proportion of butter. It uses only one egg instead of two and it has no sugar in the batter unlike Isabel Eats. This recipe also called for the lowest fry temperature of 320 degrees. When I was frying, I just couldn't get them to brown. So I ended up increasing the temperature to like 350, 375. Um, so just a note, if you're frying your oil, if it's looking too cold, you might wanna just try increasing the temperature. Mm. 
these churros get back to almost the all recipe size of being pretty skinny. Um, but I would say they're very pale and I think that might be because there is no sugar in the batter. So the sugar in the batter of others helped it brown really fast, whereas these took a very long time to brown even when I turned up the temperature. Um, I would say, once again, I prefer a thicker churro. These have been sitting out for a little bit, so they're not quite as crunchy as they were, but there was a nice crunchy um, outside with like a nice custardy interior. Um, personally, I just like the look of like a more brown churro, um, but obviously these were still delicious. Would I make them again? Yes. This recipe is by Leap Culinaria, and this recipe stood out because it's the only recipe that uses uh, a more than one to one ratio of water to flour. So this uses one and a half cups of water to one cup of flour. So it's designed to be super crunchy with a cake-like interior. So this was another recipe where I had a little bit of trouble getting the churros to cook through all the way. So even once they had browned, I was like, I think that churro is still raw in the middle. And sure enough, when we ate them like straight out of the fire, it was still pretty raw in the middle, but it set up the more it sat. So I really like how this has a very crunchy exterior and like a very soft custardy interior. Um, it is maybe a little wetter than some of the other ones. So if you tend to like that really kind of like underbaked texture on the inside and you like a skinny churro, because once again, I think with less egg, these did not puff up quite as much, um, then I think these churros would be a great pick. Okay, so as you can tell, I really enjoyed pretty much all of these churro recipes. I don't really have anything bad to say about most of them, but here is my guide on if you are trying to make a churro recipe, which one you should make. So if you wanna make a churro recipe that doesn't have eggs, more of the Spanish style, probably gonna be a little bit thinner, I would go with all recipes, my Latina table, or um, recipe tin eats. Recipe tin eats is the easiest recipe that I tried, so if you're a beginner, a little bit nervous about making shoe pastry, try that one, the results were still delicious. Um, and then all recipes and my Latina table, I would say the main difference is all recipes is very thin, very crunchy, whereas my Latina table had a little bit more thickness to it. Um, next, in terms of my personal textural favorite, it was by far a cozy kitchen. These churros are just so thick, so poofy. I just really love them. In terms of taste, I would probably go with Bon Appetit because you just really can't beat the vanilla custardy like flavor of these, just so good. Um, and then I would say um, Mexico in my kitchen is very similar to all recipes, like a very thin and crispy style. Whereas Disney and Isabel Eats are kind of like in between, so like a happy medium in between the kind of like poofy breadiness of a cozy kitchen and the like very soft and custardy interior of Bon Appetit. So these are both like, as you can see, Isabel Eats browned a little bit more for me versus a lighter golden on Disney but both like kind of good middle of the road, like very delicious churro options. Thank you so much for watching this recap of the nine different churro recipes that we tried. So I fried these all in one day, gave them out to tasters. Everyone tasted and ranked them while they were still fresh and super crispy. So I will be posting the full data analysis up on my blog. Um, and so to find more Bake Offs, you can go to my Instagram at thepancakeprincess or my blog at thepancakeprincess.com and see you next time. No finger guns this time. <laughs>